the key to understanding Avid Media Composer. If you're coming from other NLEs, Media Composer operates in a completely different way. So for example, if we head over to Premiere Pro. So here is, we have some clips on the timeline there. And whenever we select a clip, I have immediate access to say scaling. I can scale that down. We can of course move things around, and make a quick composite of these two clips here, or maybe three clips here. Select that clip and we have immediate access to some effects here. I can scale this down. We could also do keyframes by setting that up, move things around and have it all set up. So we have access to certain parameters here within Premiere Pro, same thing with Final Cut, same thing with Hit Film. You know, we have things like opacity, we even have blend modes, which is very helpful if you have clips that were shot on black or shot on white. You can use your blending modes directly without having to add an effect. Same thing for your time remapping. So this is how a lot of NLEs work. Media Composer does not operate in this fashion. And that indeed is the big secret. Once you understand that Media Composer is entirely effect based, you will stop trying to make it work like other NLEs. So Media Composer, this is the big secret, the big key to understanding Avid Media Composer is Avid Media Composer is entirely effect based. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, obviously we can edit, we have our edit tools so we can you know, edit clips. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I can't come in here and just start manipulating a clip. I can't choose a clip and then just go somewhere uh, to a transformation tab and start editing it. Instead in Media Composer, what I would do is add an effect. So if I want some of the basic controls that we have in Premiere, for example, I would grab 3D Warp and place that on my clip because Media Composer is entirely effect based. So if there's no effect on the clip, I can't transform it in any way. Now I have access to scaling, position, and all of those things. So if I wanted to make a composite of, of sorts of different videos, I would stack them on top of each other and I would apply effects to each clip, okay? We'll apply an effect there. We'll apply an effect down here. And then we can go ahead and edit those separate effects. So like this clip, move it around. Of course, I'd have to make sure my viewer is up there so I can actually see it. Go to the top effect or the top clip here, scale that down, move that where I want it. So that's how I would make a similar sort of composite image there by changing the scaling and the position in Media Composer because again, it's entirely effect based. If I wanna change the color, of course I'd, I'd come to some color effect and I would add color to the clip that I want. If I wanna slow it down or speed it up, I would choose Time Warp, right? If I want to do a blending mode, I might choose something from Bohr, so I might choose something like the Paint Tool. Okay, so if you want to transform anything in Avid Media Composer, then you need to add an effect. So any transformation I wanna to make to this clip, I can't just select it, I can't just go to an effects tab with that already pre-populated uh, movements and transformations that I have, I would need to add an effect. Whatever kind of effect you want, they have it for Media Composer. Uh, this workflow is different, but it's also, you know, it's also pretty helpful. Uh, if you take 3D Warp and you have a certain effect that you like, certain scaling, a certain position, you can always save those effects and quickly reuse them so you don't have to redo all of your effects. I could just drop this on another clip and there we go. It's exactly the same between these two. Okay, so that's the key to understanding Avid Media Composer in that it's entirely effect-based.